Hello everybody and welcome to the channel and as you can see we're going to messy video yes 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 you know we always take the, a flight we ain't doing a flight sometime we introduce ourselves to the choo choo train but we ain't got the train today girl I got me an eagle rigged up truck like you seen in Friday's the movie with Ice Cube <laughs> with Big Worm y'all remember that Friday and Friday after next well it really was shown in Friday <laughs> No, we ain't taking a luxurious plane ride today, and we're not taking the choo-choo train. All right, we are headed for the Igor rigged up truck. Okay, it's 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 got those fumes in the back. It's it's pooping out black uh, smoke, and it can barely go. But we ain't on the train. Okay, we're gonna uh, break this sucker down on why Mr. Todd Bridges, A.K.A. Willis, from different strokes or was it di yeah different strokes different strokes move the world yes it does uh-uh different strokes move the world yes remember mr drummond and he adopted two black kids and they were named willis and arnold and he already had a daughter and lord i can't think of her name to save my life and it was a crazy ass maid that was funny too can't think of her name but anyway it's not really important but we're just gonna go all about uh what's his name todd bridge is talking about uh telling lamar odom on big brother that uh yeah it's cutthroat you cut my throat i cut your throat that's just how it is out here in these streets i'm like brother brother your character played an inner city uh poverty stricken uh, environment that you all lived in when you were assuming a character in different strokes you know what i'm saying but i don't recall you ever saying anything about your life in reality was a part of poverty and uh being a part of a poor environment and you know you just didn't have a good outlook on uh, your future and Y'all call her 50 cent. I call it 10 cent. Because she ain't made the other <coughs> 40 cent to be acquiring that 50 cent name. All right. I'm just saying. Because in the rap world, 50 cent is supposed to be a boss. You know what I'm saying? A rapper. Y'all know he got some great lyrics that's going on. At least when he first came out. When he was on the Dr. Dre's direction and Eminem. Yes, child. I like that. Uh, In the club. I love that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I still bop to that here and now. Okay. But yes, we're going to Miss Mill. We're going to Miss Mill. Okay. Don't be confused with Mexico. But, and uh, Portia Family Matters. But we're going to Miss Mill. Well, we're trying to clean up this act that Todd Bridges has gotten himself into. I'm like, brother, pull up. And that's Mr. Drummond. I don't know what his real name was, but those were the characters of um, the show, Different Strokes. And, of course, Willis Floss are not there. And that's when the key is. And you know what I'm saying? If you're in a part of the actor world, you came from somewhat of a middle class to an upper class affluent type of environment. You didn't have no struggle time going on. You had to, you know, go and interview and, you know, to, to get uh cast it out for some of these roles they were playing so i don't know what bridges we're talking about in my world it's a cutthroat situation i was like girl boy sit your ass down somewhere but let me give you the quote <coughs> he said and evidently this hollywood life got into him because allegedly he was strung out on drugs and doing some illicit things for change to start try to stay afloat and he wrote a book also about killing Willis because I guess when you're a typecast and what that really is, you can't ever get jobs in Hollywood because everybody sees you in that one role. They don't think you can elevate from that role that you played that you were famous for to kind of cross over to another lane of acting. Same thing happened to Urkel, uh, Steve Urkel. Oh, and I don't forgot the boy's real name. But anyway, he had a hard time doing that too. But at least he went to school, educated himself, got his degree and whatever. So he could do other things other than acting. But it still seems like, uh, I like to call him Stefan. But when he was on uh, Family Matter, I mean, Family, what the hell was? I think it was Family Matters. Yeah. Um, he was being typecast a lot too. Because nobody could ever get over him or visualizing him in those suspenders. Uh, rolled up to almost his kneecaps and um that whole uh character that he plays steve urkel so he went through that phase too 
But then Lamar going to emphasize, you know, calling Todd a punk. You know, use the punks to be like for gays. And, we, you know, we can't disrespect them by using that slang word in a sense anymore. You know, unless I guess you're talking to two gay people and they're talking to each other. Then I guess it don't matter what names you call because y'all in the same boat, <laughs> you know, regardless. But I'm like, what, what advice do Lamar need to be given? Because he's still strung out on Chloe. I mean, Chloe didn't want to. She used to. And again, and since Travis is using her now, playing her for a fool like she played you for a fool. Because all them Kardashians do is be, they were groupies going out there to hit the right person. And they know they love themselves some black men. I don't know what's up with that. I'm like, girl, can you choose another race? Can any of the Kardashian women choose any kind of race? Other than the black race. But it seems like Kim is trying to go for the Caucasian race. Because she over there messing with Pete Davidson. And Lois is kept. And highs, I'm going to speak it out. He might end up using her in the end. You see what I'm saying? He may end up using her. Just like she used Kanye West. And uh, other suitors. You know. Uh, Chris I think his name was. He got away from her ass. And that was a good thing for him. But you know. Uh. You know, it's just I'm trying to explain to you why Tencent uh called herself being upset and crying and carrying on like you a boss. That's why I can't call her fifty cent. You ain't finna sit up there and uh be crying over nothing that somebody don't upset you here, you finna get in their ass and upset them and then go have a nice uh nap or or, 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 or smoke or drink or, or whatever you think you wanna do to continue to relax and, and you you're gonna be don't forget about it. But the whole theory behind this, when they first got into the house of uh, Big Brother, they were, you know, mingling and greeting each other and whatnot, you know, uh, chewing the fat. And they had one thing in common. Andy Cohen and the true original people had fired them. <laughs> Meaning Mellencamp got fired from Beverly Hills Housewives. And, uh, of course, Cynthia got fired from uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta. So they had a mutual common interest, you know. They were superstars in their own mind. And people knew them from the Housewives franchise. Okay. So they solidified a pact that if either one of them went up to get uh, tossed out or evicted, they would vote for them to stay. So... Todd didn't make that agreement with her when she came into the house. You know, they just found themselves um, gingerly together, for lack of a better word. And they hit it off with one another. And they became a hot mess together. Okay? They was on a hot mess uh, express. I put them on a train while I'm talking about them. But we got to go back to that uh, eager truck when we talking about Todd. But um, that's what it was. And, you know, Cynthia do try to be... Uh, true to her word to a certain degree it's, unless it's talking about candy and and um uh, what do you call it candy and kenya and when they're trying to go out the nini you know she kind of be somewhat conflicted but she ended up you know on the winning end at the end of the thing you know at the end of the grand scheme of things but i love myself some carson i'm really rooting for him to win forget todd forget all them other people i want uh, Carson Chrisley to win because he did say what he was gonna do and you know that's a man of class uh, he ain't about building money on top of money on top of money sometimes he had to look back and see where he came from and say oh I'm gonna bless somebody but I could have sworn what well, he on um he he's known for the drag race thing with RuPaul but I thought he was selling houses or something like a, a rich millionaire selling million dollar homes or something to that degree y'all get in the comments if y'all think I'm on the right track of that but that's why I think I remember him from I don't really remember him from RuPaul drag race but it is what it is he's still making money hand over fist but I do like that he said that he's going to donate to charity his win his winnings of the two hundred fifty thousand dollars if in fact he do win it okay so um that's where that goes but he is a true gentleman he went up there and rescued cynthia and he wasn't finna let todd do no unseemly thing to her verbally or physically he even had to go back and tell todd look you don't talk to no woman that way that's a grown-ass woman and she got a child and you're going to respect her. She ain't disrespected you in no way. Hey, we all playing the game. Some of us play it well, while others fail miserably at it. And at, 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 and Candy, I'm trying to figure out, did you tell her the rules and regulations of the game and how to approach the scenario without crying? Girl, or is that some of your uh, your feedback you told her to do? But it don't look it don't look like it's working to me. It don't look like it's working, Candy. Here, we should have got Aunt, Aunt Bertha up in here. Because Aunt Bertha be regulated. She could have just trained her real well. Said, go on in there with a poker face, baby. 
Go on, because I'll be damned if you're going to come out here making me look like a fool. You know what I'm saying? And my niece can when she put you on, allegedly, to the show of Big Brother so you can keep lacing your pockets, okay? Because we know Mike draining them. We know he's draining them, and he's draining your emotions and your spirituality, too. So you need your coin in case you have to relinquish him, or he relinquish you, and you have to come back with your tail between your legs to Atlanta and, and be like, oh, what can I do now? Well, you can go over there to those failing businesses uh, that I'm thinking you're not promoting, Okay. Like that eyewear line, that apparel, when uh, you had the eyewear, you had the baggage, and you had the Bailey agency. And I don't know what else you don't forgot about, or I don't forgot about that you have that you ain't doing too much with. But I really like how um, Carson came in, tried to help uh, Tencent, and tried to help the Alliance that Mellencamp and um, 50, no, oops, I almost dropped it, Tencent made with one another. So he's a true gentleman and we should all respect him from that on but i don't know why when i look at caution i think about richard simmons y'all yeah, remember richard simmons his only attire was basically um his uh workout outfits that's the majority of what you saw him in or his robe uh but yeah y'all remember when um he went missing it one time ago long time ago about four or five years ago i might be a little bit a little being a little bit too generous might have been two years ago we were looking for him but i think he's under that conservatorship and guardianship uh type of situation because he might not be he might be in the forms of uh maybe second or third stages of dementia so she's really being kept out the public eye but hopefully he's doing well throw prayers up for him okay throw prayers up for him uh <coughs> but yeah carson with you know his funky sp uh, spirit and how he dressed so impeccably nice uh he remind me of Richard Simmons, his perkiness, his his whole demeanor, his characteristic, you know, him. It kind of embodies him in a way. And with that cowboy head, I think he kind of liked the farm life. And that has something with some similarity to um, uh, Carson as well. Because Carson is a farm, farm boy and he loves horses. And I didn't know that because I kind of like the farm life too. As well as horses. And I had a chance to ride a, like a black stallion horse in my uh, early childhood. I think I was probably about 16 or 17 years old. Child, that horse almost took me over a cliff. <laughs> but before we got to that cliff, child, I would ride. I would ride. I would ride like I knew what I was doing. And the boy that took me ride, he thought, he said, damn, you know what you're doing to be, have been on a horse for the first time? I said, yeah, till he took me off that, finna take me off that cliff, me and him both finna go over. But luckily, the horse was really trained, and he actually went to the edge of it. And I was like, you know, holding the reins, like holding him back. Like, don't you go jump, or at least let me get off you. And then you can jump and do whatever you want to do. But the boy came, you know, behind me, and he uh, walked, the, took the reins from me and walked the uh, horse, you know, uh, like away from the cliff. And I was like, oh, Lord, I must be here for a certain reason. Because I almost drowned, too, um, in my teenage years as well. And I'm still here. So I am here to help somebody else elevate. Honey, I, I, I'm here for some reason. Praise the Lord. But going back to um, Carson. Yes, he's, a, I mean, just a gentleman all the way. All the way. So I was, you know, wanting to get back with you all to let y'all know what had really transpired. Because I was kind of confused myself. I had to go read. I had to go look. I had to research this thing out. But it's a pact that Cynthia and uh, Teddy had made with one another when they first got in the house. Cause, you know, you meeting people for the first time and you don't really know them. You know of them, but don't really know them. And they were just trying to fill each other out, get to know each other. And they formed an alliance. And that's what you're supposed to be doing in the Big Brother's house. You know, go with who you know or who you think you know. And maybe they can assist you further on. Or maybe you can learn their, se their secrets, their tricks and turn on them later on. Because that's the whole thing or the um what do you call it the takeaway i got from big brother you know nobody's telling you the truth everybody's lying and only you're gonna be one winner standing but you try to be a manipulator or a uh try to be a consensus uh of a following party at, at someone or some point and you try to work together until it's just like one woman one man standing or two women standing or two men standing and it just is what it is you know you go for you know you go go to win because that's what you're there for anyway manipulation deceit and all of that to get to that one main prize which is greed all uh, that money 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 okay money 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 
Money, 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 money. Yes, people don't let money, don't let money change you. No money, dollar. Yeah, honey. Yes. So that was the trip that we were taking to Missyville. And to clarify why Mr. Todd Bridges called himself getting into Cynthia's ass. And of course, Cynthia can't fight her battles for herself as usual. All right, as usual. And uh, we had to get on the eager truck. My messy truck. To go tell the story of why uh, things had transpired the way they did. And Todd, you know, failing miserable at life, it seems. Because he ain't learned anything. Because you know you shouldn't have approached any woman, any child in that manner. Or any senior citizen uh, to keep it 100. Talking with such rudeness, you know. And then trying to make like, you know, she's your equal and she's in your gender. Where you can uh, floss up. At her like that. You know what I'm talking about. You don't know me. Uh -uh. I'm like you should have said you were from the streets. Which we know that would have been a lie. Because you're not from the streets. Okay. You were in them streets. When you were trying to make some uh, dollars. After your career went tank. You know after it went south. And stuff of that nature. So you knew about the streets that way. Okay. Because you were on them. They said you were walking allegedly. Being a street walker or something. Doing some strange things from the chain. But you know hey. That's what they say. You don't, can't, you can't trust everything. You got to let it sift out. You got to let it dry and smell it. For what it's work all right and then make your own observation but i'm just saying that what he said and you were cuffed up locked up estranged from everybody at the time even though they saying you were doing some domestic violence over there with them hands okay like keep your hands to yourself beat up on yourself if you must but don't 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 do it to nobody else now don't do it but uh yeah i had to clarify what he's talking about, about that cut throw like here go sit yourself down sit yourself down read a book and then go to sleep and doing do the same thing over and over until you get a clue okay all right, and you'll be a productive citizen of society. But anyway, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully, y'all like it. Y'all enjoy it. Well, y'all would subscribe. And definitely keep coming to the house for more commentary that we can dialogue about. All right, because that's what we're here to do. <laughs> y'all be blessed and share my videos. See you next video. Bye-bye.